but staying focused on God and not the obstacles of life. Staying focused on God and not the obstacles of life. It is not the daily increase, but the daily decrease that causes us to hack away at our unessentials. It is, it's the things that cause us to lose out, to subtract from what we had planned for the day to cause our focus to now go from the essentials to the unessentials. Think about during the day how much time you, you put into things that are unessential to your life. You watch the television show, a rerun that you've watched twice, and it was good each time, but it became an unessential in your life. And a lot of times that is because we look at how our day is decreasing. In other words, how things didn't go well when we awakened that morning, and now we think, woe is me. And in thinking, woe is me, we start to look at the whole day as a blur. We, we look at the whole day as being cloudy. But I tell you tonight, the storms move. Because you wake up with a storm brewing or the morning being gray don't mean that by the end of the work day that it should be. Because you don't feel like doing something that morning don't mean you shouldn't do it. The, 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 the equator in life is this. You have everybody that wants to do it, but what separates us are the ones who do it when they don't want to. That's what separates people who are successful from people who are not successful is that those who are successful, they fail too. But what they do not do is allow things intangibles to stop them from doing what God has for them to do or what they have been driven to do or what their vision is. The Bible says without vision, my people shall perish. There are a lot of people who go to church who know the scripture but haven't lived the text. We, you can ask people right now tonight, those watching at home, God bless you, what's your vision for the next six months? They cannot tell you. And if you don't have a vision then you're going to perish. If you don't have a vision, then there's no way you can actually understand what I'm saying right now about your day decreasing because you have no expectations when the day starts. When you have expectations when the day starts, then your day should be here. But I've come to find out that most Christians don't think big. Most Christians think small, but they want big things. There's nobody in the world who want more than Christians. I, I hate to say that, Minister Heath, but it's the truth. There's nobody who want more than Christians but want to do the less. You, Christians don't want to work. And I'm not talking about working a nine to five. I'm talking about working spiritually. Getting it in the point to where mentally they can conceive that they're greater than what they're living. Jesus Christ. Uh, there, there got to be some Christians who are saying, I am better than what I'm looking at every day. Something has to change in my life. Over in Numbers right here, Moses is at a place to where they know the enemy is out there, but I got to send some spies out there to see what the enemy looked like. I got to send some people so they could kind of get some, some information and bring it back so that we can prepare in the best way we can to win this war, although God has told them they're going to win. But, but he still has to do his due diligence. And they, they miss this in the text. Moses still sends them out there to do their due diligence, although they've been given the, the cadence from God that we're going to win this. A lot of people, because you get prophesied to a church, you stop living. We stop living and start living it of the expectation of the prophecy. You have to keep working till you meet your vision. You have to continue to work till you meet your goals. I don't care how tired you are. What excuse you come up with, I promise you, uh, 15,000 people have used that excuse before you. You thought you made it up, didn't you? Yeah, but you didn't make that up. There, there have been 20,000 other people use that same excuse. Got to work and then got sick. Right in front of the boss, just all of a sudden you got sick in front of the boss. I'm telling you what I've done. Right in front of the boss, now you get sick. So the boss tells you, you should go back home. And when the boss tells you you should go back home, all of a sudden you feel no guilt. 
here she told me to go home. I had a coughing episode, and they said, go back home, not just for yourself, but for the betterment of the orphans. The whole time you have been planning that. We stay focused in the wrong ways. We stay focused on how we're going to party. We stay focused on how we're going to have sex and then ask for repentance. We, we stay focused on how we're going to steal from the government. We stay focused on who we're going to gossip about. We stay focused on how we can't win. We stay focused on that we're losers. We stay focused on our past. We stay focused on everything but our future. We stay focused on everything, Sister Barry, except victory. We don't get up in the morning and tell ourselves that victory is mine. The song, victory shall be mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory, it shall be mine. We, we don't sing those songs. We'll go and sing some off the radio. R&B song that has no power, but it makes you feel good. Because most R&B songs, we really like these old songs because they bring back memories. Memories of good times. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with going back down memory lane, but at some point you got to want to make a new memory. A new memory that you can look at and be justified in that I'm continuing to move. Let me ask you this tonight, those watching by television. Just think for two minutes on the last memory you have and ask yourself, is that memory geared towards your vision? We don't understand that we are what we repeatedly do. People don't have to tell you who you are or where you are. We love for ministers to tell us to come up and date you, stay around until somebody feel the Holy, the presence of the Holy Ghost to be able to tell you something. But you know what you're doing because you are what you repeatedly do. Joshua and Caleb were great for Moses because Moses knew spiritually what they constantly did. So when he took one person from each tribe to go out there to look over there at the enemy, he knew that two of them I could depend on was Joshua and Caleb. What do people say about you when it comes to depending on you? Or, or better yet, what do you say about yourself when it comes to depending on you? I heard Kevin Hart say something that was extremely interesting. He said that, the thing that really helped him was he looked in his mirror in the mirror one day, and it was just him at home by himself, and he talked to himself because he couldn't lie to himself because self knew who he, who he was and what he had done. And he said after talking to himself in the mirror, he got better. He said it was the one th time he talked to himself that he felt like I couldn't lie to get around me because I know me. And he said once he started living that, once he started living that truth, things got better for him because he started telling himself, you slouching. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't working on your craft as much as you should. You're not in the weight room as much as you should. You, you can't lie to yourself. There's no way I can live lying to myself and staying focused on God. Two reasons. One reason, because you lie to yourself, that, that's, that's self-deception. Number two, you should always have as your number one is that I have no other God before God. You cannot have two gods in your life. You cannot love your spouse more than God. You cannot love your children more than God. Stay focused. Stay focused. You, you have to remain focused. You cannot love your children more than you love God. Because God makes it clear in the Bible, I have no other what? God before me. Now, what's a God? Something that you put above you, something that's on a throne, something that you look up to, that you cherish and relish. You can't do it more than you love God. We are what we reportedly, we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act. It's a habit. Excellence is not an act. It's a habit. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean this right here. We're not staying focused because we're at the point to where we feel like if we can do it one time, one time is enough. If I can, if I can do this one time, I'm good. If I can go out there and walk one day, I'm great. That doesn't make you great. That's an act. That's an act of discipline. Habits make you form discipline. So when you really start looking at where you are in life, not just in your spiritual, your spiritual walk with Christ, but everyday life, ask yourself, 
What do I think I'm doing right that's merely just an act? And what am I doing that's a habit? And then ask yourself the question, if, if I'm exercising, when it's cold outside, do I still exercise? No, it's too cold. That's an act. That's an act. If you say you're in love with somebody, and the first time something go wrong, you want to go ahead and hiatus, that's an act. The problem, Sister Maria, is the fact that we don't have enough people exercising habit when it comes to love. They haven't did it enough to say, I love you. Not when, all, when everything's good, not, not January through March, but, but in November and December when everybody about broke. Now the habit comes in, and you say, well, we can't go out and eat tonight. That's okay, baby. Oh, we got a deep freezer. We good. That's okay. I'm not going to treat you any better the week you don't get your hair fixed than when you get your hair fixed. It's going to be the same. If I gain 10 pounds, I expect you out of a habit to look. Y'all ain't preaching. I'm preaching this better. But, but, but it's the truth. We get acts and habits confused. Moses knew right here with Joshua and Caleb when he gave this, this order, he knew two of them were going to be right. He was hoping that all of the spies he sent from all the tribes, he was hoping all of them were right. But some of them came back telling half-truths. Some of them came back not telling the whole truth. They all came back talking about the milk and honey. But the other ones didn't want to talk about how big the other people were, how, how many people were there. They, they didn't want to talk about them giants looking like grasshoppers. They, they didn't want to talk about that stuff. They, all they wanted to talk about at, at some point, instead of everything, they started talking about the bad. The other spies started talking just about the bad things. There's too many of them. They're too big. Joshua and Caleb says, no way. I saw milk and honey. <laughs> I, I saw milk and honey. Uh, point number one tonight, quit hanging with people who don't speak life into you. Quit, quit hanging with people who don't speak life into you. The other spies didn't speak life because of what they saw. They, they, they focused more on the obstacle than they did the prize. They, they focused more on these big, these people look like grasshoppers. And Joshua and Caleb say, I saw them too, but I saw the reward of milk and honey. And God said, we shall have, and, and, and we shall own the land of milk and honey. That's all I'm seeing. I see them, but that's just a fly in my way. And I know a lot of times there are obstacles that have prohibited you from following through with your vision. There are obstacles that have caused you to think small. There are obstacles that have caused you to become best friends with excuses than reality. They've made you quit instead of keep fighting. There, there, there are obstacles that have caused you to want to be in a dark place than to get into the light. You're embarrassed because people saw you fail. That's okay. It's okay. Let them talk. Let them laugh, but you just see the true people with you because the true people come up and encourage you. Girl, that's okay. Keep trying. Keep, I'm praying for you. I, I, I know it's been tough, but I keep you in my prayers and keep on moving. It, it, it's, it's hard to be in a place where you're supposed to gain strength and it's really the place that seeks out your energy called the church. It's a shame when most other people you look at in the world that are evil are more the people in church than on your job. They always say you can get the truth in the street. Can't get the truth in church. You can't even get the truth in households anymore. What is this world coming to? Why are we not staying focused on God? but instead remaining focused on the obstacles of life. Why is it that we are more concerned about how long we're going to live than we're concerned about what we're going to do while we live? Why, why is it that we're more concerned about tomorrow than today? When the Bible tells us that tomorrow's not promised. And then we worried about yesterday, which we can't do anything about that. You, you put your hands to the plow and look back, you're not worthy. 
Or he says in some books, you're not fit to enter into the kingdom. Why do we look at things that have no value in the present moment? Why is it that we get to the point to where we're not remaining focused? We're, we're, now if, if you go into a concert, you, you all week long, you have planned a month in advance for the concert. Nails got to be right. The outfit, you got to fill it and wear it, and don't take the price tag off because you're going to take it back. We focus on everything but God and ourselves. Your thoughts are not even your thoughts. Because your thoughts are thinking about what other people think about you. How do you get better? I mean, how do you have joy and peace when your thought is thinking about what other people are saying about you? Uh, How do we move from that? You are the director of your life. The Bible says you are the author of your fate. You direct your life according to what you think. And then what your actions present. If you're not making as much money as you should, look at yourself. That's what I do. I turn down opportunities sometimes because in my job, I say, I just don't want to do all that. that that's just, it, it, that pendulum swings too low the next time we get a new governor. All them people get fired. I, I didn't have enough faith in trusting God. And that was why I was pastoring. I just tell the truth. Could have moved up even farther. But I just didn't want to go through all that red tape rigmarole up there. So I'll stay where I am. I'll make this salary right here. But I'll I'll, I'll swing right below the pendulum. And I think they call that playing it safe. Now, I know y'all probably have never had anything like that. But your pastor had. I, I, I thought myself out of the blessing. I thought myself out of the blessing. And it's tough, not thinking yourself out of it, it's tough telling people the truth. Where people look and, and, and immediately start thinking, oh, well, I ain't never did that. Yes, you have. There are some opportunities you've had in life that you thought yourself out of. You looked at it and saw that you were going to be hard-pressed, that it was going to be challenging, probably a little bit more than you were willing to give. And so you opted out. And that don't make you a sinner. Let me say this. It doesn't make you a sinner, but it does halt opportunity. And that opportunity is going to come around again until you pass it. You choose every day where you put your focus. You choose every day. Joshua and Caleb chose every day. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to keep blinders on, and I'm going to be looking right here at the enemy. And then I'm going to look at the milk and honey. And then I'm going to see both and go back and report. We saw the enemy. This is what they look like. But, but the reward for, for fighting them is so much greater. When all the other spies said, we saw that. But we saw them people, they big. How many of y'all have done that? Those watching by TV, how many of you have done that? You saw God showed you everything, the good, the bad, the pros, the cons. But the cons got your attention more than the pros. And then you found yourself not moving in the direction that God had given you. You know all the scriptures. God will open a door no man can close, a window no man can shut. Go through it. If he opened it for you, go through it. If you say for real, don't be afraid of the change. The reward is greater. You choose where you put your focus. If you don't read your word, that's because it's not a part of your choice. You have other choices that are greater than your word. And I won't ask people to raise their hand because there's a lot of people probably watching um, virtually that can get away with it, but y'all know where you are. You know where you are as well. You know where you choose to put your focus. Some people focus is always on their bills. Some people focuses are always on their wants. Some people focus are always on their illnesses, their medical conditions. Some people focus always on their children. Some people's focus is always 
on stress. There's so many things that we focus on instead of the things we should be focusing on outside of God. Number two should be yourself. But you don't think that you are greater than what you are. We have become satisfied with being complacent. That really doesn't reward anybody. It would cause you to become stagnated. It, is, it allows you to become content. And content is okay. But the only thing about content is you never grow. Because you stay in one place, you become stagnated. So, yeah, I'm content with where I am, but I know right now I will never grow until I'm stressed. Moses, throughout the first five books of the Bible, one of his constants was he was always being stretched. He was always being stretched. He always had to have an unbelievable, uh, substantial amount of focus in his life. First of all, he gets taken from his parents, given uh, to the Egyptians by way of the Nile River, put in a, in a basket that his mama put him in so he wouldn't be killed. And then one of the Egyptians, the, the, the sister, finds him, her and her maid find him. And he's raised as an Egyptian when he was really a Jew. He had to stay focused. Then they, after all he had done, because he did a great job wherever he was, he stayed focused in the place he was in. Then they put him out. He, they put him out of the kingdom on a donkey with water in front of the donkey, his hands tied in the desert. He was on the donkey till the donkey died. Got off the donkey in a dry place. But he was focused. Got to start working with this shepherd who had all these daughters. The oldest daughter and him had something. They felt something for each other spiritually. He was out there tending to the sheep one day. Saw a light up in the mountain. Started following the light. The wife started following him. That's a good wife. You hear what I said? She, she didn't try to lead him. She did what? She followed him. Miriam followed her husband until he told her, stay here. Stay right there. Stay right there. He stayed focused. He went on up through the mountain. His reward was he got to have a one-on-one -on -one with God. God personally gave him his next assignment. Some of you can't get your next assignment because you haven't finished this one. You're wondering why you feel stuck. And you're trying to do everything, like I said Sunday, you're trying to do everything you can like I did. Mr. Heath, I know you was out of town. I told him Sunday I had got a second job at one point. All out of my calling. I was driving trucks around the airport. You know, big 18 wheelers, you have to put, you have to get out and put your loads in yourself with the forklifts and all that. Man, I was tearing those trucks up. I never could see the money. But I saw the wasting of time. And I was going home, my wife was like, baby, you're working at 11 o'clock at night. You got to be back at work at 8 o'clock in the morning. And this money ain't helping at all. These little peanuts ain't helping nothing. I eventually just stopped doing it. I think I was there three weeks. It took me three weeks to realize I was going, I was going an alternate route. Now, my question is, how long has it taken you to realize you're not on the right road? How long has it taken you to see that you've become distracted by the billboard that people send you, party over here, or the billboard that somebody said over here, let's go do this, or I'm coming over to the house, I got a bottle, don't worry about it, I'm bringing some chicken wings too. How, how many of you have gotten distracted? Because I have. And it's hard sometimes to get back on the right road. 
but we have to get back on the right road because focus is a funny thing. Focus is one thing that can change everything. Your focus can change your life starting now. Change your focus, change your life right now. You don't have to go see a doctor. You don't have to go put anoint yourself with oil. You don't have to go and tell 10 people to touch you. No, your focus can change your life right now. But some of you won't do it. You'll say, it was a great sermon. I enjoyed it, Pastor. And then it'll go empty and void. And Satan say, I don't have to worry about that church because they hear, but they don't put action to it. So there are certain churches that say, no, I don't even have to worry about them. Because the people in that church, they hear, but don't apply. Their lives speak about it because their lifestyle, you, you cannot be Christ-like and your, your lifestyle never change. Your lifestyle has to change because the Bible says, let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus, which means that once my mind is like Christ Jesus, now my focus changed. And as my focus changed, people can start to see slowly your change. And after a while, they'll do one or two things. It draw them to you or it drive them away. Stay in focus on God and not the obstacles in your life. There's a lot of obstacles in our life. Things that we had no control over. COVID, you had no control over that. You hadn't done anything that deserved anything. It just came. But plagues will come. That's what the Bible says, plagues will come. Just like the end of the world going to come. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? Always remember, your focus determines your reality. Your focus determines your reality. Your life is controlled by what you focus on. You have a business, you want that business to relish? Move. Move on it. You can't tell me you got a business and you want to do well in your business and then you late for every, every appointment you have. You, you got there late to the appointment as if you got 50 people waiting on you. No, when you first start in the business, you got to be on, you got to hump. Because I promise you, what you're trying to do, somebody else is doing it and somebody else is trying to do it better. What, what separates you from them? No, you have to make sure that you're focused on it, and your focus has to be sincere. It can't just be for money, because money comes and goes, and if it's for money, it will fade. Most people, when, they went, when Bill Gates was doing the computers, he never thought about money. He just wanted to move technology along and look at it. Warren Buffett just wanted to make sure the housing market was good. And how he started benefiting from that and all the money he made. He don't really care about money. He still drive a Camry. One of the five richest people in the world. Ten, I'm sorry, one of the ten top um, millionaires in the world, Bill, uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett drives a Camry. Somebody sitting here saying, my uncle drive a better car than that. And he worked at the bar. Maybe so. But is your uncle trust fund like you? What, is your uncle leaving something for generations to come? Now, Warren Buffett said he ain't leaving a whole lot for his kids. He's going to give most of his money to charity. That's what he said. I'm getting most of my, leaving them a little something, but most of my money going to charity. They got to learn to make their own. In other words, he's saying they need to have their own vision. Millionaires get it, man. Because if you don't have a vision and I give you the money, it's just going to enhance who you are. So if you sm you're smoking weed now, by the time I give you this money, you're going to start smoking heroin. Snorting cocaine everywhere. You got a cold in the summer. It's the truth. That's why God, 
won't give you more than you can bear. Because if he gives you too much success at one time, he knows your mind is not set to handle it. Your spirit is not strong enough to carry it. Your heart is not big enough to hold it. So he said, I have to give it to you in increments. Increments that when you show me that you've advanced, then I give you a little bit more. You have to be excited about when a little bit more comes. Because it's never on God, it's on us. It's on how your habits have formed. Your habits form according to what your focus is. Why these people in the Bible were so great, they weren't no smarter than us. Janiah, they were no smarter than you at this age. You might be probably smarter than they were, but they were focused. They were focused when God gave them an assignment they followed it through. And it was hard. They had doubts. They was troubled. And like it says in here, the, the, the people outside in the world were trying to get at them. I don't want you to think because you saved, there are no problems. I'm going to tell you the truth. Save more problems. The best advice I've ever gotten as a pastor, I wrote this down. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten as a pastor was to stay focused and keep moving. It wasn't about scriptures in the Bible. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten was to stay focused and keep moving. And I'm quoting Thomas Dexter Jr. At one of his leadership conferences he went to, he said, I don't care what happens to you as a pastor, Stay focused and keep moving. I, didn't, I never forgot that, and we've been to many of his conferences. He had great conferences. He did a lot of those conferences, a lot of knowledge and wisdom. He said, I don't care. And then he went into his story about all of the trials and tribulations he had and still have. But he said he stayed focused and he keeps moving. I never forgot that. Understand that there are times when fear can paralyze the bravest of heart. You, you, you've seen it with people that you looked up to, and it looked strange when fear came upon them, amongst them. It, it was, you, you, you didn't do, uh, no, no, not Teddy. Teddy tough. Oh, there's some fear out there for Teddy. There, there's fear out there for all of us. Mine are snakes. I'm, 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 I don't know. I'm just. I pray about them. Lord, I don't know why I'm so scared of them things. But that's a fear of mine. I don't know what your fear is, but you know. Like I said earlier, some of your fear is success. Some of you are afraid to be successful. Some of you are afraid to jump out the boat. Some of you are afraid to put yourself out there. And you will be surprised how God tests you when you show him how much faith you when Jesus was out the boat, walking to the boat in the storm, they didn't even realize who Jesus was. There's a ghost out there. You know, they had never seen that before walking on water. And when you don't see things before, they look real strange to you. You know, it, it looked real strange to you when your neighbor, when y'all been in the projects all your life, and your neighbor gets a, gets a, a, a good um, uh, corporate job. That looks strange in the project. It looks strange in the projects when somebody get a brand new car. Because most of the cars are used. I wish I had. It's the truth. It's the truth back in the day when people can get a lot of groceries and didn't have food stamps in the projects. See, those were strange things. I, 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 I can use Jesus on the water, but people will never see that. So I try to hit people where they are. It's a strange thing when you love your parents more than they love you. See, those are strange things. You know, when, 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 when dads are, are raping the boys and the daughters, their children, those are strange things that, that happen. I, I don't want to just talk about Jesus walking on water. We, we know that, and we know that Paul, that, that Peter got out the boat and said, I'll come to you. And we understand that Peter went to him, understanding that as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he could walk on water. The Bible says as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, 
walking on water in the midst of a storm. Jesus. Jesus allowed him to continue to move. I don't know what storm you have in your life tonight. I don't know how deep that water is, but if you keep your eyes on God, keep your eyes on Jesus, he'll keep you above the water. He'll keep you moving. He, he kept Peter moving. It was Peter who looked down, not Jesus. It was Peter who looked down, and after he looked down, his focus changed. And as his focus changed, Peter started going down. Notice when you're really into Christ and, and, you, and you're focused, you notice how much peace you have. You have a peace that surpasses all understanding. But when you start half going to church, when you start half praising God, when you start half praying when you start half reading your word, all of a sudden, you're not as peaceful as you was. You start becoming irritated. You, you, you start becoming agitated. You, you start to get to the point where you anger easy because you've lost focus. Peter dropped in the water, but I like how he didn't let him drown. He, he didn't let him drown. Now, he, once he started falling, the Bible says, Jesus lift out his hand down to pick him up. Don't ever think you're too far in the ground for Jesus to get to you. Don't ever think that your problem is too big where he can't pull you out. Don't ever think that there's an illness that cannot be healed. Don't ever think that there's some abuse you have or something mentally going on that you cannot be delivered from. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too deep where he can't put his hand down there and lift you right out of it. If he can break the temple in half and in three days mend it back together, he can do anything. If Jesus can die, go down into hell for three days, take the sting out of death, and then come back, give us eternal life, there's nothing too hard for him. Just like he picked Peter up out the water, he could pick you up out your problem. Some of you live in fear. You live in sadness. You, you live in misery. Give it to God. Put your hand up and say, lift me up. So I can be you lifted up with you. Some of you have been working on projects for 10 years of your life. God, lift me up. I've tried all I can try. Lift me up, God. Help me to stay focused, God. I'm getting weary and heavy laden. I, I've been doing this too long, God. I'm, I'm it's not even what people say no more. God, I'm detrimental to myself in my thoughts. I have become my worst enemy because of pride. Be encouraged. Stay focused. Focus. Don't allow the obstacles of life to hinder you. One of the best commercials ever made. Take a licking and keep on. Take a licking and keep on ticking. Thank God for what you have. And then praise him for what he's going to give you. Stay stay in focus. Thank God for what you have and praise him for what's coming. Joshua and Caleb did it. They didn't care about the obstacles of the enemy, how big the enemy was. They saw the prize. Stay focused on the prize. Jesus knew his prize wasn't on the cross. His prize was our power to Take the sting out of death. The cross unlocked the gate to hell. Oh. The cross was the key that unlocked hell. He had to die on the cross so it can unlock hell, so he can go down there to show his authority. 
But everybody down there knew him. Because at one time, they all were friends. The Bible says, and one third, thank you, Jesus, of the angels was descended with Satan from heaven. So they went from angels to demons. They knew God. They knew Jesus when he came, and they knew his power. Because it was a lot of them. Why they couldn't jump on Jesus? You ever thought about that? Why they didn't jump on him like that? I know they was a gang. That shows you the power he had. That shows you the focus. Listen, and I'm done. I'll start next week. But that shows you the focus Jesus had. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that he went down into hell, and it took him three days to find death in hell with nothing surrounding him but enemies. But he went anyway. I wish we had more Christians that can say that. It was hell, but I went anyway. <laughs> it was tough on me, but I blessed her anyway. <laughs> I didn't feel like it, but I prayed anyway. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to watch this program, but I had to read my first, first anyway. I wish we had more people that were any way they like. Anyway, I, I, I know I'm going down here, and I know all these clowns down here in hell. But I'm going anyway because they can't defeat me. That's the mindset, Janiah, you got to have when you start filling them applications out for college. They can't defeat me. What God has for me, it is for me. Whatever those sheds, God got a bigger one to open. Keep moving forward. Do not look back. I don't care what kind of advice you're getting from people. Look at their life. And see how happy they are in their life. I'm always saying, be very selective about the people you choose for advice. Because Satan comes in many disguises. He comes in very still voices. I always never go by what people say. I go by how they move. That's why I don't preach at a lot of places. My wife can tell you, I get a lot of a lot of invitation to go preach. I've had preachers, I'm going to come over there and preach for your doctor. No, you ain't. No, you, uh, and, and, no, no, no. That, I'm, I'm raising up mine. I raise up mine because I know they got the same heart as I do. I know we got the same spirit. Yeah, it took a little longer, but look at them now. Them jokers can preach with the best of them. So I don't have to worry about who getting up and what they're going to come say. Because some people will come preach to try to take your members. Some of them will come preach to try to take your members. I don't know what that with them. Yes, and I'm like this every Sunday, 1112 of Lakewood Avenue. That's where my church is. you like, why are you? What that guy? You need to be saying one, 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 one. Heaven Boulevard or something. You don't put your, you know, it, it, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man, it, it's tough. But we have to remain focused. And we have to have a plan. And sometimes it looks like your plan is bleak. Keep on moving. Like the Bible says, stay encouraged. Or like David said, encourage yourself. Stay encouraged. You are the one. You are the chosen one that's going to tilt the scale in this world. You are the one. 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 All y'all up there in the balcony, y'all are the ones that's going to tilt this world. When you become totally focused. I'm just a deliverer of the word. Y'all going to be the ones that make the true difference. Jesus tells us one more thing before he go, and we'll start this next week. Go out and compel others to come. That's the last thing he told the disciples. Go out and compel others to come. In other words, 
stay focused on the task remain focused on the task at hand. Bring somebody to church with you Sunday. Not because we're trying to get a lot of members, but we're we're trying to get people saved. We're trying to make sure people get better understanding. Because for a lot of people, rappers are their pastors. They know all the lyrics to all the rap. Some people, R&B, Beyonce is a lot of people pastor. I mean, I like Beyonce. She's fine. I mean, she's cool. But she's a lot of people pastor. They idolize her. We all owe God a debt. That lets me know that none of us are God. Stay focused on God and not the obstacles. Put your hands together. God bless you. Amen. You've just had an experience with champions, and we are so glad that you tuned in today. Let's continue to honor God through our commitment to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online via Cash App at dollar sign champions for Christ. Next, you can give online at www.championsforchristim.org. Lastly, you can give during service or on our mobile app available in the Apple and Google Play stores. Please be sure to tune in each and every week to our online broadcast. Encourage others to tune in with you. Remember, we are champions because we are champions for Christ.